Welcome back to Blue Sky Radio. I'm your host, Ben Wiggins. This show is around the narratives and procedures in the space of industrial and commercial air cleaning. And I'm here with the CEO, the founder, the mad genius, <laughs> the, uh, the man himself, the man behind Blue Sky Global, Dr. Michael Seitz. Michael. Hi, Ben. <laughs> how's it going? Do you... Is there a person you can think of who you feel has taken a similar approach to business, to professional pursuits, to life? I would say somebody I feel akin to, as it were, um, just by doing a lot of reading and watching, is Richard Feynman, actually. Oh. He had similar, I don't know, just view on things mm -hmm. of really getting into stuff, but mm -hmm. also all over the place, you know, lots of ideas, dumbing things down. I think it's so important that we need to understand things almost in a childlike way. When mm. you really get things and you can explain them in a simple way, then, and, and to teach is, it, it helps just to make things simple. To make the complex simple. Yeah. No, no <laughs> pursuit more, more important than that in teaching. As a reminder, you can click the link in the description or call the number in the description and use the promotional code blue sky radio to get your first week of rental on us. Michael, in our first episode, we discussed how you came to invent the blue sky machine because of issues you were seeing on job sites regarding dust collection. Can you speak a little more to the dangers of the current process of mobile dust collection? Ah, uh, yes. Um, so just to be clear, there are these definite two areas of dust collection. One is the fixed dust collector, mm -hmm. uh, which ha where there are a whole lot of issues sure. related to that and a lot of installed base. There's just millions of dust collectors out there, bag filters, they call them, mm -hmm. in certain things, and then the more modern cartridge filters. And then you get into the realm of mobile dust collectors, which yeah. are for project work. Right. Um, examples of that would be a bridge a bridge. Um, renovation so they may be stripping off an old lead paint or, or cleaning it up or sandblasting or even welding it yeah. and then they're repainting it so that could blow all over the environment on the workers so that would be an area of a project requiring dust collection there could be a disaster that happened maybe a factory burnt down there's toxins in the in the ash and so you'd want to maybe contain that area keep the workers safe as they plowing through the dust or well um, a welding project say um, a one-off on a ship or something like that that's come into dry dock, um, a nuclear demolition. We've got a very interesting job on a nuclear demolition, for instance, hmm. where that dust is potentially radiated. You've got to put the space under negative pressure yeah. and um, you can't just blow radiated dust out into the environment. No, no, of course not. Um, asbestos remediation, hmm. maybe a sick building, um, that kind of thing. Uh, a ship that comes into a dock and, you know, they need to decontaminate a certain hole because it was so embedded. So you have a confined space that needs uh, the dust removed and purified before you blow it either back into the space or out into the environment. Right. And you've talked about, you've used the phrase in the past, 364 days of safety. Yes. Which okay. implies, of course, there's another day at some point. What, what, is that, what does that mean? Okay. And this is particularly true in the mobile environment. So mm -hmm. let's say, for instance... Uh, somebody is doing a project that's two or three months. So they rent the dust collector, they put it next to their job site, they run it, something goes wrong, they need to change the filters. They're really not set up for filter changes, typically next to a road, okay. right, or on a busy construction site or a demolition site. And so you've got all the safety going on, you've got all this attention to detail, how clean is the air, how's the airflow, and now the dust collector's not working. So the job stops. Or maybe it doesn't even stop. Now the now the crew have to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the mobile dust collectors, as an example, have an auger. That's how you get the dust that you collect out of the machine. All right. Those augers seize up. Okay. An auger is just a big screw that's turning inside the machine. Right. Can you imagine, Ben? In order to get that auger to start pushing the dust out of that machine, somebody has to go into the belly of that machine, mm. dig through the dust. It's it's raining down from above because the filters are usually above. Right. Dig the auger out. It's not now. It's probably seized in there, so you need right. a lot of force in that. Caked up. Caked up. The whole deal. It's spilling out. It's on the guy's clothes, or maybe there's a crew. 
Um, but they've got to get a new auger in, otherwise the dust is in the belly. Yeah. How can that be safely done? It just can't be. So you've got all this safety going on. Right. And then the machine is down, and now somebody who's probably inexperienced has to get the job back on running. You know, there's a lot of pressure. Right. Has to work in. Because the design is not intrinsically safe. Yeah. That machine has to be fixed. And there's no way to do it except to get in there or replace the machine. And who's going to throw that machine away? Nobody. Right. So that whole idea that you've got a machine where it can fail during a project or even at the end of the project need to be cleaned. And that just isn't a good plan. Right. A machine, when it fails, is a nightmare. What was the original intent of this process and how did that process lead to these safety issues? Okay, so my I was never in dust collectors or filters or anything. I was a dust creator. We had a company uh, where we did metal coatings. A very fine dust creation company. <laughs> <laughs> very fine. <laughs> metal. It was literally, it was metal dust. Yeah. Hexavalent dust, to be precise. Aaron Brockovich type hexavalent chrome. So we were dealing with dust collectors. It was highly regulated, what the staff were breathing in and blah, blah, blah. It was really, really carefully checked, front right. end. Yeah. And then there was our dust collectors that we had at the end of the project and nobody cared. Mm -hmm. But I owned the company, I ran it, and my staff or people that had to deal with the stuff we'd collected, mm -hmm. these dirty filters. And it was a mess. It was dangerous. And there just was no way around it. You would double bag and then the dust would, you know, get onto the bag and somebody would drop some. It was just, wow, look the other way, look the other way. Right. Hexavalent chrome everywhere. Absolutely. So we worked very carefully not to do that, blah, blah, blah. And the whole time I was thinking, there's got to be an easier way. There's got to be an easier way. How do you invent something that when the cleanup comes, that it's safe? Mm -hmm. You don't have to mess with it. Inkjet cartridge. Click it out. Put a new one in. Right. Right. Okay. You have, you've given me a list of, of issues. Let's talk about, you, you mentioned Dream. the hydraulic auger, you, let's t filter removal, waste handling, noise, high duct inlets, hazardous materials. There's, yes, there's, there's a, all, it's a lot shocking here. Okay. So let's start with the filters. So in these mobile dust collectors, obviously they've got these massive banks of large filters. Mm -hmm. um, they need to be exchanged after each project, depending on what's on them. Sometimes they go from project to project, mm -hmm. but somewhere along the line, these mobile dust connectors need to have their filters changed. Regular filter, uh, dust collectors do, but let's stick with the mobile. Right. Maybe this has to be done on a job site. The job site is certainly not set up for safe filter removal. Somebody opens a door, typically, mm -hmm. um, has to go in. This is a job site, they probably not they don't have hazmat conditions. They don't have cleanup equipment, anything. They have to pull a 50-pound filter out of a machine. And they could be up to 24, 36, 48, up to 96 filters. They've got to take them out of this machine, Oof. hand by hand. Yeah. Try and bag them. Meanwhile, the dust, everything is dropping off these filters. Right. Maybe the wind's blowing. Maybe rainstorms come in. Maybe, 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 maybe. The point is that the dust collectors that need to have their filters exchanged, that is a job that for mobile dust collectors, nobody's really thought through. And these dust collectors are all the same, but nobody cares. Well, they care, but they've already got the dust collectors. There's no alternatives. Right. So that's where Blue Sky comes, comes along and says, no, you do not ever have to touch a filter. You shouldn't, especially in a, in a project environment, Right. Never, never, never allow a filter to be collected. Mm -hmm. And that's even where we've gone to the EPA and Oceans and tried to just appeal to them to say, there is another way of doing this. Now, I know there's a lot of equipment out there, mm -hmm. but is safety really, um, you know, should we compromise that because we have a lot of equipment or should this whole thing be rethought? Mm. That's the question. And then what does implementation look like? Exactly. Well, implementation is pretty easy. The, the machines are so simple to operate. It's almost silly. It's so simple at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. The whole barrier to entry is not really the operation or the logic in it. It's simply we already have equipment. And what are we going to do with that? Now we need to buy new equipment. Right. So it's double investment. You have to divest of the old equipment. 
and invest in new equipment. Mm. And that's why our company actually specializes in rentals. Hmm. So you just rent the rent the equipment for for the project, so you don't have to buy anything. Right now, people can come rent something from Blue Sky. What what happens next? How does this all unfold? Does Blue Sky become a nationwide rental company? What's your vision on how all of that unfolds? That's a great question. No, I and Blue Sky, we are technology people. We are focusing on the development of reliable equipment. Mm-hmm. And continuing to stay on the forefront of it. Yeah. Um, the the best home for blue sky dust collectors is, say, with a waste management company hmm. that handles waste every day, has the trucks to deliver it and pick it up. The incredible thing with blue sky is that nobody's actually dealing with waste anymore. The waste is contained inside the smart box module. Right. So now the company that you would rent from would supply you with a machine at the end of the project or during the project they would simply come take the machine or the component and treat that component as waste dump it and and the machine would be ready to go out to a new client Hmm. so the best place for these machines to ultimately end up is in a nationwide waste management company you simply call them up you say i need a dust collector or maybe you have a factory that you want to get rid of all your existing fixed dust collectors, you say, I'm just going to rent my air cleaning service and I'm going to go to my waste handling company and then they would simply on a monthly basis rent it to you on a yearly basis, on a lease basis and service it while they're at it. Mm. So you would just, you know, forget about it, just like compactors are or or waste bins. Um, Or another way of doing it would be to go to a rental company Mm -hmm your traditional rental companies, whether it be United Rentals or something like that. Yeah. Um, and you just rent the equipment from them and then contract your waste handling company then to service the, you know, the waste that you generate. Okay. So those would be the two major options um, that we're looking for in the future to make it really, really easy to have the equipment available on a large scale. I see. How are these things powered on projects? Where, where, does, where does the power come from? Okay, so traditionally mobile units have a diesel engine attached on the machine, Mm. which is not a good idea. Mm. It's very convenient, right? The machine comes with its own engine. Right. However, the engine itself creates its own unique set of challenges. Okay, like what? You've got to refuel the engine. Right. Now the engine is located where the dust collector is, which means you've got to bring your refueling, your tank. If you get a spill or diesel, you're potentially mixing that with dust, but you're in the location of the dust collector. And in the projects that we used to run, this was a real problem because we did, in the beginning of my previous company, we rented mobile dust collectors. That's where I learned what not to do. Mm -hmm. And the refueling was a big deal. And sometimes these engines, their batteries would run flat because we'd run the pulsing system or something. So that was a nightmare. The engine wouldn't start Mm -hmm. because the glow plug or something was wrong with it or there was dirty fuel. So the very, very first design step with Blue Sky was to get the engine off the machine and use generators. So Blue Sky is powered only by electricity for the the fans. They are electric. And then you run a generator because the generator can then be placed at a convenient place. And here's what's interesting about a generator, Ben. If the generator goes faulty, let's say a bad engine as well, right? you can change out a generator in a very, heartbeat. Very easy. You cannot change out a dust collector easily right? because they're big and heavy and bulky and normally parked in an awkward place. Yeah. The generator you can scoop up, bring in a new one in in a heartbeat. Yeah. Okay. And waste handling then? Waste handling is another thing. Most dust collectors discharge their waste on a continual basis through using this auger into drums. Right. Now on a job site, you've got to do drum handling. Drums are not that easily to handle. And if they fall over, which they can do, they often put on bad pallets, um, you're dealing with an awkward system. So with Blue Sky, if it's a non-hazardous waste application like a bridge or something, uh, all the dust from the Blue Sky falls directly into a roll-off, one of these big roll-off containers, and it's handled by a waste truck okay. directly. Right. So the Blue Sky machine drops it, is actually perched on top of a roll-off container. If it's hazardous waste like nuclear, radiated or asbestos, it f- it's part of the smart box. So the waste hmm. is actually with the filters. 
So in a roll-off sized um, machine, you could have up to 15, 20 drums all contained within the machine itself before it needs any clean out. Yeah. And that'll normally see it through a six month project. It's probably useful to go to the website. There you can see some photographs of what the machine looks like. And it looks like a big roll off. Right. Or or these pieces that you bolt together. And our viewers would do that at www.bluesky-global.com. Correct. Yes. And there's some graphics there that show how it all goes together and where that waste is collected. Right. How can we move to greater utilization? What what are what are some steps that um, that executives can take and that you and I can take, or or people who might be viewing this show who are who are not CEOs or in purchasing for you know medium to large corporations? It's actually really really simple because they are rental machines. Mm -hmm. It just needs a decision to say we are going to move to modern safer technology mm -hmm. it's as simple as that if you're a renting machine um you can rent wherever you like it's it's really a question that we get out of a groove that we've been doing if you've been renting something from a certain company for the last 25 years you tend to go back there yeah becoming aware that there are different ways to handle dust dangerous dangerous dust uh, it's just a question of um you know getting pricing Right. So the pricing is very similar. And then making a decision that you're no longer go going with the old technology just because it's not safe. Right. What if what if you is is there something to an approach of try it once? Absolutely. Um, to just do it, you you don't have to make a permanent commitment because it is a rental. It's a rental. Even if you're deciding you want to purchase one or you want to purchase a fleet of them. Why not just rent in the beginning? Try it out. Try it once. Mm -hmm. It's so simple. Once you've tried it once, it's like no brainer. But again, it's that change that's so hard to do. But from a safety perspective, how would you not make the change if you knew that it, nobody would have to touch the filters? Mm -hmm. Nobody would have to mess with the dust. Yeah. The yeah. machine is intrinsically safe. Yeah. And then there are there are different solutions for different needs, as I understand it. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Right. So when you deal with hazardous materials, um, there's not a lot of options out there. Hmm. In fact, I am not sure how people are safely operating large dust collectors for hazardous waste. I think um, a lot of corners are being cut hmm. um, because the focus is on cleaning air. Right. And, and the machine that does it has not been under the spotlight. Yeah, um, and then for the less hazardous, like silica dust and that, which is not toxic per se, it's con it's dangerous dust. Um, people are basically just put it in there, put it in there, put it. You use the dust collector, and then whatever happens afterwards, it's somebody else's problem. Yeah. Hmm. And then for someone who's just out, yeah, has a you know has a regular job at a desk in a, at a company somewhere, how can that person make a difference? Identifying that there's an alternative technology, um, trying to just spread the message that there is an alternative machine available that will do the job probably better than any other machine because we're a modern machine. So we'll do the job really, really well, mm -hmm. cost competitive. But here's the thing, that somebody introduces the idea that it is a much safer device to be used. Mm -hmm. Just simply bring home the fact that safety matters. Yeah. For our viewers, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment if you have a moment. Don't forget to share the episode as well. Click the bell to get notifications. And we really appreciate you tuning in. Michael, thank you for your time today. And uh, this has been Wiggins for Blue Sky Radio, signing off.